This event was canceled two years ago because of COVID. Last year we had a similar show again. It was intimate. Yeah. So we're intimate again tonight. We're basically going to start with some remarks from our president, Dr. Leslie Wagner. But let me first just tell you a little bit about the plaque and how we select committees. So that is a photo of the plaque itself, which is about eight inches in diameter. It weighs five pounds. It's made of bronze. It has the logo of the Grosse Point Historical Society, which is the French windmill that once stood on Lake St. Clair in the 1700s. We started giving these plaques in 1987. So we've given them every year since then. Last year we gave plaque number 100. So now this year is 101 and 102. We're giving two really beautiful properties. One is 114 Lothrop. The other is 100 Kenwood. Uh, just spectacular homes. So the, the plaques that have been awarded this year are already mounted on the homes and you'll see photos of that when we go through the presentation. So throughout the year there's a plaque committee and we consider nominations from really anyone. Committee members, society members, the general public. We, we, we're always looking for houses to award plaques. And we generally, as we do that, we consider three things. Sort of what information do we have about the house itself? What story can we tell? We generally like the homes to be at least 50 years old. Most of them, as is the case tonight, are much older than 50 years, but we generally look to at least 50 years. Second, are there, were there people associated with the home or events associated with the home that make it significant in Gross Point history? And third, uh, we look at the architect. Is it a noted architect, which is the case with both homes tonight, or does it represent some does it represent well some particular style, which is also very much the case tonight? I think that's all I have to say about that. I'm going to introduce our president, Dr. Leslie Wagner, to say a few things. Thank you. Leslie. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I'm so happy to be here, and I've been president uh, for just about a year. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how I came to Gross Point. Um, of course, my parents brought me to the War Memorial when I was 16 to go Viennese waltzing. And I saw these beautiful girls in these fancy dresses and these elegant gentlemen waltzing around on Lake St. Clair. And I thought, that is what grown-ups do. And that is what I want to do. I want to live here. I want to do this. Um, then about eight years ago, I heard that there was a home in danger of being knocked down, um, the Cadu Farmhouse and that was built in 1850 by the French settlers. The community rose up in 1991 to preserve the house once with the help of the Gross Point Historical Society. And here we were again with our history in danger. Beaumont committed to paying for the historic part of the home to move. So me and 100 people vied for this free house I can tell you, a free house is not free. <laughs> um, I kind of learned the hard way. It, it was all right. I love owning a little piece of history. But it was picked up and moved from Jefferson and Notre Dame to where it resides now. 533 St. Clair is where I live. And it's a joy to see the old wood that our French settlers used to build this home. It's its fourth location. It was floated, it was built on site in Detroit by the trees they milled right there when Detroit was a forest. And then they floated it by barge to the shore of Gross Point. And then uh, it was moved inland. And then it was moved to the Jefferson location and then my home. It's actually kind of five, five locations. Very cool. Uh, the home came with a plaque. I have it proudly displayed. We had to kind of shift the house on its side so I moved the plaque so it's visible and I think all of us who have a plaque or even all of us who have lucky enough to have a home in the gross points um, it, we're very fortunate to be here the historical society was founded in 1945 you are probably aware of the PW house the Provencal warehouse that was built in 1823 am I correct 
that sounds and right. That sounds right. And uh, we got possession of that, and that's been our home. But really, Gross Point has fabulous artifacts and documents. So we have built a state-of-the-art $1.4 million history center, kitty corner from it. I hope you will come and see it. We hope to be open to the public after October 31st. If you're around on October 14th, leave October 14th. Yes. We're having an event where we're telling spooky legends of the fall um, on the side porch of the PW house. And then we're going to allow tours into our new building. We're thrilled. We love it. Um, we've had the community already step up and make lovely donations so we could buy the land, do the studies, raise the house that wasn't important, uh, 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 appropriate, and then build this new structure. But we will be coming to the community because we are going to throw rent parties. We have a $500,000 mortgage. We need some big donors to step up or all of us small donors to have fun every month and make sure we make that payment. So please uh, consider, if you're not already, being an individual member at $50, a family member at $500, a, an 1823 uh, corporate member at $1,000 per year. And we even have some super special secret um, lifetime members for individuals. So think about us when you make your giving plans, if you would, or even your, um, your legacy plans. And with that, I think I'll turn it back over to Mike. We've got some really exciting homes. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. I didn't realize your home had been moved that many times. I know. I don't think it's going to move again. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Let's do this. Okay, there it is. I love that place. One for the time. Wow. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful oh, home. Awesome. So the home located at 114 mm. Lothrop was designed in 1937 by Hugh Keyes for Dr. J. Stewart Hudson. The house is built in the Regency style with a number of Georgian architectural details and is simple, elegant, and impressive in both its design and stature. The owner, Dr. J. Stewart Hudson, was born in London, Ontario in 1891. He practiced medicine for 62 years in Gross Point and was assistant medical superintendent at Harper Hospital before going into private practice. He graduated from the University of Western Ontario. He served as a major in the Canadian Army Medical Corps and with the first Canadian Mounted Rifles in World War I. He was awarded Allied and British War Medals. He married, Doc, he married Julia Buell and they had two daughters and three sons that they raised in this home. Uh, Dr. Hudson was a member of the Country Club of Detroit, the Gross Point Club, the University Club in Detroit, and the Mill Reef Club in Antigua, West Indies. He died in uh, January 1977, and then his wife lived in the house for about another year until 1970, January 1978. So the architect, Hugh Keyes, is really a very well-known architect in Detroit and Gross Point. He was born in 1888, studied architecture at Harvard University, where his drawings won an honorable mention in the Intercollegiate Architectural Competition, which is a big deal in collegiate architectural world. After graduating, he worked for a number of renowned architects in Detroit during the early 20th century, including Albert Kahn, where he worked with Kahn on the design of the Detroit Athletic Club, C. Howard Crane, and Smith Henchman and Grills, all, all you know, very well-known architectural firms in Detroit. He's opened his own office in 1921, and he focused mostly on residential projects, designing a number of grand estates for industrialists and others in the Detroit area with names like Ford, Fisher, Stroh, Shearer, and Pingree. His career spanned the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, the post-war boom, and into the mid-century modern period. 
He lived most of his adult life in Birmingham, Michigan, and was a member of the Detroit Folk Club. He died in 1963. He was a prolific and versatile architect whose styles ranged from Tudor Revival to French Renaissance and Georgian, but he is perhaps best known for his Regency designs. With symmetrical bow-fronted wings, wrought iron balconies, and hip roofs, Keyes played an active role in the creation of the Cranbrook Institute of Science in 1933, and by the end of his career, his designs were considered among the most significant in the Detroit area. He designed more than 20 homes in Gross Point, including the Italian Renaissance Villa located at 221 Lewiston. So that's the one if you're on Lewiston going down the hill from Ridge to Charlevoix. It's, uh, it's a big Italian home on the left. It's a really beautiful home. So Keyes chose to construct 114 Lothrop with red brick, incorporating a large central pediment with a circular stone relief above the second story. Um, the home also features many Georgian architectural details, including a flat slate parapet roof, rigid symmetry, decorative window elements, and an oversized entrance. The design also accommodates a circular driveway framed by an iron fence. The foyer of the home, yeah. It's okay, you can no, I'll, just sort, I'll of, just, I'll just sort of circling through the middle. No problem. Sorry, folks. <laughs> no, we're all we're good. Yeah. Uh, so the foyer features a black and white marble floor leading into a long hallway that provides access to five rooms. And you can you'll you'll see them. The living room, the library, that's the living room. Detail, the library. This is a big home. Um, study. So the porch room. We're not going to see a picture of the kitchen. The kitchen's sort of cool. It's got a big, um, big vault, huge vault that, that was used for silver. Oh, wow. Um, oh, so and family. <laughs> Many of the rooms have beautiful arched doorways and large decorative fireplaces. The fireplace in the living room is designed by the architect himself. Many of the details found throughout the interior of the home are inspired by a Greek key motif. You may be able to see that in places. A decorative border constructed from a continuous line shaped into a repeating pattern. And this is echoed by further Greek-themed elements on the fireplaces and in the ironwork. So we've seen the large living room, large dining room, library, and study, all the fireplaces, a large family room. Uh, the two-story sweeping staircase features modern-looking iron balusters and a wooden banister. The second floor, which we're not going to see, uh, has a large master sitting room and six bedrooms, along with three smaller bedrooms and a sitting room for maids. Uh, the Hudson's hired landscape architect F. Bruce Winkworth to design the garden who worked in collaboration with another renowned local architect, Leonard B. Willicke. Uh, their design included adapting an antique wellhead into a large circular fountain. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, there it is. Uh, the landscaping gardens were revised with several distinct areas and a pool added and an additional fountain added in 2007 by landscape architects James A. Myers and Karen Pernell of Historical Courtyards and Gardens, which is a great sort of landscape company in Michigan. The landscape and gardens are English Georgian in keeping with the home and include a formal rose garden, butterfly garden, rhododendron azalea garden, and edible garden. So as you can see, the overall effect of this house is it's really beautiful. This was the um, Junior League show house in 2000. Uh, and so unfortunately, the owners, Francis and Elizabeth Scanlon, are out of the country, so they were not able to be here. Uh, they're very excited to have this award. They really have lived in the house not very long, about a year, um, but they're very appreciative. They, they appreciate its history and its architecture, so it, it's a beautiful home. May I ask you which were for you did? You know, I don't really know. I think it's north of 10,000. It's about 13, okay. You think really? 13? It's, I mean, it's a it's big, big home. Those are, it, those are big.
big it was beautiful rooms and I know the owners are new to the house are they from Rose Point no they're not he is from New Zealand well he was born in Chicago but but moved to New Zealand at a fairly young age and then spent many many years in New Zealand many, many years they're probably about 40 spent a long time in New Zealand she is from Monroe Michigan so she had some family, she I think still has some family in Monroe, okay. and they they lived for a while in California, then they lived for a while in Arizona, and I don't know, they looked at Gross Point, they, they seemed to me, I met them, they seemed to be very enthusiastic about Gross Point, they love it. So that's great. Yeah. So we that's, you were thinking the blueprints, so there are blueprints, um, for the first and second floor, and also a third floor, which was never built. So I think they, I think they probably don't need the extra. Room, but anyway, that's a beautiful one. Okay, so do all those keys thing. work? What? Do all those keys work? Uh, I think they do. So those are all. Oh, then I have to ask Barney a question. So those, oh, those are all the keys to all of the rooms, and with this, you know, very Atlanta, yeah, they're all typed out from. Uh, I don't know the first owner, but they've been there. They kept it. If you can see the uh, see on the upper right hand corner, Mike, uh, April fourteenth, nineteen thirty-eight. Okay. Wow. And it says forty-four Gopher. I I think all the keys. That's it might isn't that the reason why the house there weren't that many houses on the street. That's why it was originally known as 44 Lothrop. Now it's 114. Yeah, I think they all change because I think our, looking at our blueprints, I don't think it was always 110 more. That could be yeah. out. Oh, no, 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 that makes that sense. Be yeah. 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 Yeah, if I take a look at that green door that says Danger 4800 volts, that is uh, the transformer that was built into the house when it was originally built by, I guess it was called Detroit Edison back then. Um, uh, when the uh, owners, uh, the Scanlons, took me into there and showed me it, I could feel a charge in the air. <laughs> the, the, the hair on the back, the back of my neck stood up, and I just backed out slowly. Uh, they have been told by DI, by, uh, by Detroit Edison, that they cannot, under any circumstances, go in there. If it blows up or something, uh, God forbid, in the middle of the night, or something goes wrong, they have to wait for DTE to go in there. They have been forbidden to go in there. And I think this plumbing was taken from uh, spare parts for the Titanic after it was built <laughs> and that might be the uh, original water main shut off so uh, so to safe to say the house is highly uh, highly charged and highly powered so I guess that's like a transformer would be up you know mounted yeah, the cars, yeah. but it's in their home and where is that is it in the basement yeah yeah and notice the steel welded door like the hull of the Titanic no joke It's scary. I mean, it's 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 so big. It's almost institutional in, in yes. size, but it's 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 a beautiful house. Several bots could go off in the room right next to you. You would not know. It. Yeah. You would not know. Awesome. Awesome. When did this be the fourth owners? After the Agleys and um, part of the most recent. I don't exactly know that. Because the Agleys, when I've been in the house, the Agleys were here for a while. There have there have been. Really, very well, few. Yeah, the first owner lived there until 1978. Yes, yes, yes. Mike, I believe the doctor, uh, the doctor and his partner lived in the house for um, at least, I think, 15 years before the scam was bought. Yeah, I so think I thought that's what I remember. Time, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh. Okay, yeah. so let's go to 100 Kenwood. Let's. Which is an equally <laughs> stunning house. Much smaller. Oh, my <laughs> So the home at 100 Kenwood was designed by Raymond Carey, also a very well-known architect in Rose Point in Detroit. In 1928, in the French provincial style, for Thomas Cram Whitehead. Kenwood Road has an abundance of homes designed by some of Detroit's leading architects, including in particular Robert O. Derrick and Raymond Carey. 
So Thomas Cram Whitehead was the second son of James Thomas Whitehead and Ida Frazier Whitehead. The elder Mr. Whitehead was the founder in 1889 of what eventually became Whitehead and Kales, a company that employed more than a thousand people and fabricated steel for buildings and bridges. Among other business ventures, in 1909, the elder Mr. Whitehead organized with Henry Ford, James Cousins, and John H. Johnson the Highland Park State Bank. James and Ida Wells Whitehead lived on Seminole Avenue in Indian Village. Thomas Cram Whitehead was born in 1893, graduated from Cornell in 1916, and became a vice president of Whitehead and Kales. The architect, Raymond Carey, actually Raymond Marwood Elton Carey, was born in Guernsey, Channel Islands, England, in 1883. He was educated in Bath, England, but by 1901 he had relocated to London. He obtained impeccable credentials while working there, including with Charles Boise, an acknowledged master of the arts and crafts style in England, and under the prominent architect Leonard Stokes, among others. After traveling for a year in Italy, he left London in 1909 at the age of 26, and he went to Winnipeg, where he worked briefly as a draftsman, then he went to San Francisco for a little bit, and then returned to Winnipeg in 1911, where he formed a partnership with John Woodman. They produced several significant commercial and industrial buildings in Winnipeg, and he used his scholarly knowledge and historical precedent to great effect in a number of residential commissions there, including a lavish mansion for Robert Rogers in 1914 and his own house in Tuxedo Park in 1915. In late 1921 or 22, Carey left Canada and moved to Detroit to continue his career. He first worked under his own name, and in 1924, he associated himself with an engineer named Horace Esselstyn. And the partnership of Carey and Esselstyn was active from 1924 until 1929, during which time the home at 100 Kenwood was designed. During this period, Carey produced some of the most distinctive and sumptuous residential masterpieces of his career. In Gross Point, he designed more than 15 mansions in his signature Neo-Georgian and Tudor styles, among other designs. His name is also linked to Detroit commissions, including the Belle Isle Bridge, which links Detroit with Belle Isle, Gate Lee's Department Store on Michigan Avenue, two schools for the city of Detroit, a branch police station, a factory for the Mississippi Glass Company, an office building for the Detroit Automobile Company, owned by Henry Ford, and he worked on the site of Detroit General Hospital. In addition to the home at 100 Kenwood, Mr. Carey designed the home at 51 Kenwood, also in the French provincial style, and 138 Kenwood, in the Tudor Revival style. So 51 is on the corner, I think, facing Gross Point Boulevard. Over. Across the street, yeah. 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 And then also 138 Kenwood. He designed a home for Walter B. Ford on Moran Road in 1925, four houses on Provencal, and a large home for Gilbert Pingree on Voltaire Place. And Voltaire Place is basically um, Von Dome and Ridge, and there's sort of a curve where, yeah, where yeah. an old racetrack used to be, and that home that he designed is right on the curb. It's a, it's a beautiful home. And Pingree, grandfather, was a four-term mayor of Detroit and the 24th governor of the state of Michigan, so that's an important house. Um, Carey returned to England in 1937. He was elected a fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects in 1938. His last known work there was for an office building on Tottenham Court Road in London in 1950, and he died in London at the age of 92 in 1975. So the home at 100 Kenwood contains a number of elements that are classic French provincial, including a stone exterior, steep roofs, 
floor length windows on the first floor, tall second story windows with arched tops and patina copper trim. French provincial style first appeared around the 16th and 17th centuries in Provence, France, and evokes a warm, friendly, and rustic atmosphere. So let's go through some of these. That's at the front of the house. You can see a little bit, and we'll see it better in the next photo of the nun's walk. But I think it's I think it's the next photo. No, nope. another beautiful front shot. So there's the nun's walk, which was which was planted, which runs the whole length of that block of Kenwood planted by the nuns who ran the um, convent of the Sacred Heart on the length, and they've grown into, you know, beautiful, it, it's a really unique feature of that block of Kenwood. So front hall, living room, you can see the floor length windows. I don't think that's original fireplace. It's beautiful though. Uh, just from looking through the remodel, I don't think that is original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Thank you. Library. How long have you lived there? Five years. Um, this August it was. I mean, we remodeled the whole thing. It, it looks was, like it. I mean, it's yeah, um, that was a very small kitchen, and it was an incinerator, one right in the middle of the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> so they took it out from brick by brick, from brick by brick, and it went all the way to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You could look at the ceiling and look through the down to the kitchen. Wow. And where that beam is right there, that was uh, that's where the dining room on the other side was. Oh. So we did lose the dining room, but the kitchen was very very tiny. I mean, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. We've kept like some of the original stuff things like the um, that chandelier and things like you know, we've kept all the door handles and things like that. It's all really fresh and beautiful. Yeah, it did I mean, it's, it's all nice. everything's been touched. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm broke, but love slavery. Yeah. Look at yeah, the slate's amazing. Beautiful ground. That was just all we done. It used to be like a little garden that, that a lot of the bricks were all uneven. And this past summer we redid the, the, the back part of it. It looks great. So you didn't change the, you didn't expand on the house? Nope. No. We did not. We, we added like that flooding right there over the Julia balcony right there. We did add that. Mm -hmm. So there's the black. 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 Yeah. 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 So Patrick and Jackie Sullivan are the owners, seated right here. Do you guys want to say anything else? If anybody has any questions. <laughs> it is totally remodeled. We're working on the basement right now for the kids. We did do, we do the whole third floor. My daughter has the whole third floor. Every, <laughs> yeah. Every bathroom's redone. You know, all but two bathrooms, I think, are redone. You know, uh, there's almost like two masters on the other side is where my son is. There is a balcony off the back, and it's a large room. And we, when we bought it, there was a, a kitchen up there, a sitting room, and a small bedroom. Oh. So what we did when we remodeled it is we opened it all up. We put the laundry room where the kitchen is, so the second floor laundry and opened it up and bumped out the bathroom three feet and gave it, it's like a whole master suite there. That's great. As <laughs> yeah, I can vouch, I can vouch for uh, 100 yeah. Kenwood. The owners have impeccable taste. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed his heated floors in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> is, the, uh, is the outside lunch though? Yeah. Yeah. Is the outside oh, lunch though? The trend is lunch though, I think. The trail of the house. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Like around the, around the door there. Yeah, around the door and where the doors are mm -hmm. is Stop. all limestone. I don't think that house itself is limestone. I could be wrong. But you know what? It's not. Because when we, if you looked in the kitchen where the refrigerator and freezer were, that used to be a door. And then um, where the pantry is, that used to be a bay window. So when they came in, it, it, I don't think it's limestone. 
I, I'll bet it's stucco, but I don't know. Yeah. It is a type of stucco, I think. Right. Because we had to hire somebody that specialized, and then my brother, my brother-in-law did it. And then we had to hire somebody that specialized, and then my brother-in-law did the remodel. And he had to find someone that knew whatever technique it was, so it looked like the outside of the house. Because we closed it in the door and a big bay window. What's your favorite so part of the home, each of you? What's your favorite part? The back patio where I have a, I have a big awning With on the me, back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I can enclose it in the winter, and I have a furnace in the garage, that heats and it pumps in heat into there. So I, it's year round for me to go smoke my cigar and have my cocktail. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I love, so that's my I, I love the living room. Um, mm -hmm. well, sure my kids know. call it the white house room. Uh -huh. But the den is where we, we commissioned have, someone to paint the picture. Yeah, that, picture. that is by the we commissioned a girl, a local, lady, a, 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 a She's a local. <laughs> she's a local artist. That's yeah. right. It's um. Well, we had. It's so crazy because her and her sister are both artists. They're older, and she, we commissioned one for the front of the house before the new landscaping when we first moved in. And we commissioned her sister, which uses oil painting for the men's walk. Mm -hmm. So it's Jane and Feely. Oh and yeah. Jamie good, Feely yeah. did the uh, front of the house, and then her sister, no, Jamie Feely did the Nun's Rock, and then uh, her sister's Chris um, Wardwall did the front of the house. You might be able to see it in the picture of the kitchen. If you go back to the picture of like the great room, you might be able to see that picture. That she, so yeah, right there. It's, it's right in between the see stairs. See that the stairs? Right yeah. There. yeah. So yeah. that is the picture of the house. Front. That's from um, Christine Wardwall. Um, and then her sister did the nuts walk. Yeah. So we love it. And, uh, never thought I'd live in uh, on Kenwood and let alone the nuns walk and everything else. So yeah. it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Huh. But there's always work to be done. We're doing the basement now for the kids mm -hmm. and we're just waiting on the cabinetry to be done and then it's pretty much the furniture to come in and then it's How many bedrooms? It's five. five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the third floor, we have, it's a full. Um, I mean, we did the, a beautiful bath. Uh, yeah, there's like a movie area where there once was all the way across storage. the top of there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. yeah, all the way across the top of the master um, bed. It's the, like a movie area out there. It's, um, yeah, all, you know, don't forget what the type of roof line it is. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Some part of it, so mm -hmm. it's not. But the bedroom itself and the bathroom doesn't have that roof line. Mm -hmm. So was that third floor? Attic space or what? No, no, no. It was a full bathroom, okay. and uh, it was all uh, same as the den that was painted blue. It was ninety pine, so it was all ninety pine up there, and we we uh, heated it, made it, you know, just a little bit more. It had pretty shelving and you know, a little scattered. A lot of angles. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of angles. When you go back in the bedroom. I I mean, we can't we can't put like a dresser on the side of the wall. <laughs> you know, because it's got so many angles. It's got a um, steep roof. Yeah, you see right there, see the yeah. angles? Yeah. So they're all angles, it's very cool. But you know, if you want to put a tall dresser up, you're not gonna put one. Uh, but you know, the one thing that we can't both talked about that it's not an enormous house. It's maybe fifty five hundred square foot. Mm -hmm. And it's livable and mm -hmm. not you mm -hmm. know, it looks grand from the street, but inside it's not. It's not overwhelming. overwhelming. It's not like the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. I do want to thank Barney Nowicki from First Impressions yes, Photography. You, the best mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And Giles Simmer and Lynn Cameron, who certainly were big helps. Leslie, thank you very much for all your help. Thank you all for attending.